But the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful greeting to all of my colleagues and really it's my great pleasure to be with you today and let's continue on this nice lecture by statistics for clinical research. Uh, I still remember in 2007, Dr. Yasser Osman uh, asked me to conduct a retrospective uh, study on certain kind of renal tumor. And after I worked like uh, for two years, I went to the bus statistic. He said to me, Muhammad, there were a lot of statistical errors in your uh, data sheet. And uh, eventually she was not able to conduct any statistical analysis. And uh, I wasted the, the work for like two years. I was lucky that Dr. Ahmed Chukair started such kind of courses on uh, medical research, biostatistics, uh, at urology and the nephrology center at Mansoor University and I attended this course for three times to understand the basics behind this industry. And then I had to restart my work again. I had to do a new SBSS data sheet, collected the data, uh, the patient data again and then as I remember I went to the biostatistician and I think she uh, was able to, to conduct the analysis in just like one hour. So lack of a, a knowledge on basic biostatistics is one of the major challenges that all or most of the medical professionals face. I can tell you that 95% of the, the SBSS sheet that the colleagues have been sending to me have a lot of errors just because they do not have the basic information or the basic knowledge on biostatistics. So I think the, the, it has been known that the, the, the biostatistics is tough, which is, is not right. I think the, the best description is uh, the resources on biostatistics are tough rather than the topic itself. I think this is the best description. Just if you go to any medical library, just, uh, just figure out the, the box on biostatistics, the least one is like 300 to 400 pages, which is vast. Most of those, bios, uh, most of those books are written by experts. Uh, most of those books are more theoretical than practical. And they are really dense. And uh, uh, moreover, most of those uh, books giving all the information in, in one block, which is really dense for the beginners and for medical professionals. For that reason, oh, I still recommend the following um, uh, recommendations. So uh, we have been following the theory to uh, theory to practice. So knowing the only the or, or giving the least amount of theory with more practical uh, application. And then also uh, we are following the step by step stretch technique. For example, in this lecture, uh, it's not uh, it's not it's not practical at all to give you the ANOVA to give you Cox proportional hazards, low rank test, a lot of uh, sophisticated uh, analyses, statistical analyses, but. It, it's practical to give you the most frequently statistical analysis or most frequently statistical tests used in practice in step one and then we're giving the an, another in step two and then for advanced level we can give the advanced statistical analysis. I think this is, you know, makes sense. And then I wanted to stress on the uh, something which is the concept matters. Uh, most of the medical professionals, um, which is not right, they are more, uh, you know, preoccupied with what's behind behind the calculation of p-value, what is behind the calculation of or how the chi-square is being calculated, which is not, you know, necessarily for you in clinical research. So know the concept, that's it. Okay, so this lecture depends on the previous lectures. Please go to the Facebook page and the YouTube. Please review the types of variables. Please review the types of variables very well. Please, you know, you have to know for starting this lecture, the uh, central tendency, mean, median. You have to know when we have to use mean, when we have to use median. The criteria of normal distributed data and bill-shaped curve. And uh, please review also the, the uh, standard deviation. You have to know the concept. And also you have to know the criteria of non-normally distributed data. And I think, as you remember, we expressed them with median and range correctly. And let's start today with the types of statistical analysis. I'm just, I'm going to stop here a little bit. Um, it's not necessary to know how the statistical analysis is being done. It's not necessary. It's not necessary to know how the statistical analysis 
uh, be done on SBSS. But it is crucial, it's fundamental to know the basics, to know the, the which, which test for each one, you know, the indication of each test, okay? This is, this is important. So my objective is to prepare your SBSS data sheet correctly and then you take it to biostatician or send it to me and then if you prepare it well, if you understand, if you have the basics and then the biostatician, the biostatician will, will be able to conduct the analysis in just like a, a few minutes or one hour. This is the aim of uh, this lecture. And simply, we can divide the statistical analysis into three main types. Univariate, bivariate, multivariate. Univariate is easy. So if, for example, analyzing, analyzing the age alone is univariate. Analyzing the gender alone is univariate. Analyzing a single variable like tumor stage or tumor grade, it is a univariate. No comparison. If there is no comparison, univariate. If there is no comparison, no p-value. Yeah, because it is a frequent mistake. Univariate has no p-value because simply we work on a single variable only. Okay? And then I'm going to going to bivariate and multivariate. Bivariate two variables, multivariate is more than two variables. Bivariate two variables multivariates more than two variables. Let's start with the easiest part, which is univariate. Okay, huh? one variable. I think you can uh, review the previous lectures. I will not waste your time. Based on, based on the, the type of variable, the type of the analysis will be. That's it. Univariate analysis is descriptive analysis. That's it. One word, descriptive analysis. So it depends on the types of variable, if it's ordinal, nominal, or numeric. I think you still remember ordinal and the nominal, uh, the expressed with, yeah, frequency and the percentage, and the numeric based on their distribution. If the normal distributed data, numeric data, it will be expressed with, huh? yes, uh, mean and standard deviation, otherwise will be expressed with median and range. I think you can review the previous lectures, no need to waste your time. I'm going to stop a little bit here in a bivariate analysis to identify something named, you know, dependent variable, which is outcome. Okay, just I'm going to give you uh, two examples. If we, for example, study uh, the, uh, the risk factors for lung cancer, for lung cancer, okay. So I will study the effect of gender, age, smoking, uh, genetics, family history, uh, radiation exposure, asbestos, all of those, all of those affect huh, the lung cancer. So my outcome is here, huh, is the lung cancer. So lung cancer is the dependent variable, okay? Gender could affect the lung cancer, age could affect the lung cancer, radiation exposure could affect the lung cancer, all of those named independent variables, okay? So we have dependent variable and independent variables, okay? We have dependent variable, which is outcome, and all the independent variables can affect the, the outcome. Another example, for example, if, if we have a medication for, for example, lowering the blood pressure, okay, and then the outcome is yeah, measuring the blood pressure, measuring the mean, the measurement of the blood pressure. So what, what could affect the blood pressure? Age, a gender, okay, heart disease, diabetes, cholesterol, all of those named independent variable. They can affect this one, which is outcome, which is the dependent variable. This is understood now, but you have to identify the dependent variable on starting, okay, before starting the analysis. And also it should be identified before, it should identif identified before even on conducting, at the time of conducting or creating the SBSS data sheet. So uh, the dependent variable, which is outcome, has three possibilities based on, I will speaking now with coding, okay? I will not explain nominal and the ordinal. So could be nominal, could be ordinal, could be numeric. But just I eliminated the ordinal because it's, you know, it's not frequent in clinical practice. I'm going to, to, uh, uh, to explain it later on. Just while taking the nominal and the numeric, okay? So the dependent variable could be nominal. Any, anything with yes or no, yes or no. Occurrence of the disease, lung disease, yes or no, yes or no, okay? And the numeric like arterial blood pressure that I explained it now. So the outcome could be yes or no, like lung cancer, yes or no, or numeric, okay, like the arterial blood pressure, which is the measurement, which would be expressed. We are going to analyze it, the, analyze the mean of the blood pressure. Okay, so let's start with nominal. So I have now one nominal, one nominal, which is the dependent lung cancer, and I wanted to see the effect of, for example, smoking with lung cancer. 
Smoking is the less or no nominal and lung cancer is nominal. If I compare, if I compare, if I analyze one dependent nominal with another nominal, ha, chi square test. Repeat after me. Two nominal, chi square. Chi square, two nominal. No, two, two nominal, chi square. One of the most frequently used statistical tests in biostatistics, chi square test. So, chi square simply is a test, statistical test, to you know analyze one dependent nominal with another nominal. The best example, the easiest example, the effect of smoking on lung cancer. That's it. You have to understand these basics. How the chi square is, is calculated? It's not necessarily. Just you have to understand this concept. Let's go to the arterial blood pressure, which is the numeric. I said blood pressure is numeric, so I will analyze the mean. So this is the dependent variable. So the, 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 the most frequent scenario, numeric with the two groups. So if I have, oh, for example, if I have this medication, for example, if I have a new medication, and then I will randomize it. So uh, a group of people will take the medication, like nizinopril, for example, and another group will take the placebo. So I have two groups, two groups, which is nominal. And I have the dependent is numeric. So I if I have a numeric-like dependent, and if I have a, another independent nominal, so this is named t-test, t-test. So t-test is simply testing, t-test, t-test, testing the means between two nominal uh, variables. So I will see the means of arterial blood pressure in lesinopril group, and I will see the uh, mean of arterial blood pressure in placebo group, and the t-test will compare the means in group A and the group B, and he will see if there is statistical significance or not. So about that, if there, is, if there is no statistical significance, I can say that there is no difference between lesinopril and placebo. However, if there is statistical difference in group A and the group B that created by t-test I will say there is a statistical difference between two groups so t-test t-test compares means between two nominal t-test please yeah repeat t-test compares means between two nominal groups okay so chi square test uh, t-test I can tell you those you know we use it most more frequently in uh, in analysis okay multivariate multivariate analysis I will take also a common scenario one nominal, okay, with many nominals. It could be, okay, it could be the independent more than or uh, nominal and continuous, but I will take uh, just a frequent example in clinical practice. One nominal, okay, with multiple no nominal variables. We just said nominal with nominal chi square, okay? So if I, for example, the study the effect of smoking or lung cancer, I will see, I will use the chi square test. However, however, if I study the effect together. I am going to both put all of those together. Smoking, family history, exposure to asbestos, radiation therapy, gender, all of them. I'm going to put them in one block. Against the lung cancer, I am going to use logistic regression analysis is a type of multivariate analysis that tests here, for example, the multiple nominals with single dependent nominal. Those are the most frequently tested statistical tests in clinical practice. Class square t-test logistic regression analysis. Those are the most frequently used statistical analysis. Class square t-test logistic regression analysis. Okay, so uh, up next, I'm going to give you a live demo on SBSS on all of those. And then, and I think it's make as I said to you, step-by-step -step strategy. It's not necessary to know about with ANOVA, uh, Man Whitney, of course, Kulwalis, Luke Rank, and all of those, just leave them to level two. Thanks for having me, and just follow me on a live demo on SBSS. Thank you.